Welcome back fellow gamers. So I wanted to talk to you today about what I think is one of the most versatile and fun games to play and it requires minimal setup. No, I'm not talking about hide and seek. <laughs> I'm talking about werewolf. So the game has been released by a bunch of different publishers. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it pretty much like anywhere that they sell games. Either it's called Ultimate Werewolf, uh, Werewolf by Night, uh, just Werewolf or whatever. Essentially, if you don't know the game, it is a party game. And before I continue, it's probably one of the best games you can actually play as an icebreaker or getting to know people's names. And essentially what it is, you have a bunch of people sitting around in, in a group and you have one person that's the moderator. The moderator does not play the game and he pretty much or she goes through the, the, the phase of the game making sure everybody stays on track. While the rest of the people that are playing are going to be either humans or werewolves. The goal is for the werewolves to kill the whole village before the werewolves are killed. And the humans try to find who are, are the werewolves. So I mentioned the game is played in phases. It starts with everybody going to sleep, so the moderator asks everybody to close their eyes. Then the werewolves wake up, so everybody who is a werewolf wakes up. And you will find out if you are a werewolf or a human, because you'll be given either a card or a piece of paper that says who you are, what faction you belong to. So if you had a werewolf card, you open your eyes. You silently, I need to stress that, because I've played in games or sometimes at the beginning people didn't realize that they weren't supposed to be silent, you silently choose and agree upon a target with whom you will kill. After that, the village wakes up, the narrator then lets the village know who has been eliminated. Once that happens, it's now an open floor discretion on who everybody thinks is uh, they should vote off. And obviously the werewolves participate in said vote without the humans really knowing who they're aligning themselves with. Now, one thing of importance is that somebody who is out of the game cannot speak under any circumstances. They cannot speak, they cannot lead on hints. And, and as a moderator, you need to be very strict. And I'll actually have another video up probably on, uh, in a few days about how to moderate. If, if you are gonna be a modern game and, and how to run a tight ship because a game of werewolves will only be as good as its moderator anyways so that continues that voting process and then once the votes are tallied that person is lynched they reveal their card and the whole cycle continues until one team wins now the game could be as complicated or as simple as you want if you want to leave it just werewolves and humans that's great uh, depending on the game that you have you they might be like you know a witch or there might be a hunter or like a cupid like a lover like lover duo but that, that gets overly complicated and and to be honest with you i'm not a big fan of, of like the cupid and a few others i like to keep it as simple as possible maybe throw in the witch or even the little girl the little girl gets to peek during the middle of the night when the werewolves are are, are voting so that's really cool as an extra dynamic that's the thing so it's it's that simple of a game now i did mention you could pick it up on amazon i i actually don't know where my copy is because i think i lent it to my sister because it's honestly it's such a great game that everybody i've introduced it to always wants to play it and then they themselves get a copy of the game and then they you know kind of like go through it it's so versatile that it's good for all ages I haven't met one person that says, oh no, I don't really want to play that. It's like they get hooked like that. As I mentioned, if you're going into a new group, it's perfect for you to introduce that as a game. When I first met my, my girlfriend's extended family, it was on the Easter holiday a few years ago. It was the first time I was meeting a lot of them and I didn't bring my game with me. So, and this is another great way. You, you just, I, we just took pieces of papers and wrote W for werewolf, H for human and pass it out and everybody was on board so not only was i moderator because i was able to i was the only one who really knew the game it turned out to be i, I realized how good of a icebreaker it is because you're talking directly to people as moderator you also give an aura of control and confidence because you're directing the game so a great icebreaker and also if you're a teacher i'm kind of i'm kind of rambling all over the place here but i'm so excited about this game just talking about it i want to play it <laughs> As a teacher, I, I've heard of many teachers doing it like on their first day of school and, and just playing that game. It kind of gets the students out of their shells just from the voting process and, and thinking of who's a werewolf and having the werewolves band together kind of forms a, a sense of uh, camaraderie within the students. It's, it's so scalable, like you, ha you need at least, I would say, seven players or six plus a moderator. But at six, it's kind of like, it's it's done kind of quick. And when you get a lot of people, the one risk is that 
somebody who gets eliminated near the beginning of the game will probably get bored halfway through, I mean, you know, 20 minutes in. So you need to keep, as a moderator, you need to keep the games going really quick. Uh, I try to be a moderator as often as possible, not only because I like watching people and how they play, but I know how to keep the game going quick. And if, if you have a moderator that doesn't keep the game going quick, it might disinterest people. So while there might be a lot of hype and activity and people want to join the game, that will soon fizzle if they see the game is not organized. And again, you'll check out my video and, and I, I feel that the tips I'm going to give in that are going to be really good and will really help you out as, as a moderator if you haven't played before. What I would suggest is, you know, if you want the, if you want a game like this, it's not expensive. It's like twelve dollars. The thing I found is that with my cards, especially during the game, people will stuff it under their leg while they're sitting down, or they'll put it in their shirt, or uh, they'll put it in their pocket, and the cards get ruined. And because of that, they get marked. So, like, there's one card I actually had to throw it because I knew that that card was a human because I had like a small crease. Whenever somebody had that, I'm like, okay, this guy's a human. I don't need to worry about it. Uh, so what I like to do is I take, I even though I have my game. I still take a uh, white piece of paper and I just cut them up into even and I go W H W H W H and then sometimes I'll throw in little girl and, and so on and so forth. So it allows you to A, you can keep the papers that are still in, in good shape but you don't have to worry about everybody like tucking their, their cards in because I became kind of like this this guy like, oh no, 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 don't, <laughs> don't tuck the cards into your pants or anything, like you're gonna ruin it. And that kind of takes people out of the game as well, but that's, that's neither here or there. So that's my suggestion to you. If you have a lot of friends that not don't respect your stuff, but they don't think about like, you know, what they're doing to your stuff, go that route before buying it. And I would suggest approach the group saying, hey, I have a, like, I have an idea, let's play this game called Werewolf. I, I almost guarantee you that once you do the first game and you say, we'll just do one game and see how it is. After that first game, they're gonna continue. I have not met one person in the 250 people I've played this game with ever say, yeah, not for me. Like I have like my grandfather has played, uh, like my, my parents play, these friends have played, work colleagues have played. It's great when you have a large party, uh, by party I mean group, but even at parties, like I've, I busted this out at parties. <laughs> and even non-traditional gamers will play this game. So that's it, I've kind of rambled during this video, but I, uh, it's because I get so excited playing, I actually haven't played it in a few months, and now that I mention this, I, I kind of want to play. I'll be sure to link the video on how to how to be a good moderator, how to improve your moderating skills, in I hope the next few days so I can link it to this video. If you have any tips and tricks on on how to you know play werewolf, so not even necessarily moderator, but what do you look for in, in, a, in a werewolf player, and how do you determine who's human, how do you determine who's a werewolf, I would love to hear it. It's uh, I could talk about werewolf experiences all day. There's just so many good stories, um, and it's such a great game to play, especially with family and friends. That I I think it's the top of my recommendations on games that people should play in large groups. It's just it's a no-brainer. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If you'd like to see more, click on one of the two videos that are there or click on show more in the description below to see when and what we upload as well as when we stream. And if you need an update on what exactly we're gonna be streaming that week, don't be shy to hit us up in the comments or reach out to us on Twitter. We'll be more than happy to chat. <laughs> Until next time, good gaming.